Kathy. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. All right, so we're gonna start the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee meeting for Thursday, January 20th, 2022 at 3 p.m. So we're gonna start with the minutes of the meeting from November 18th, 2021. And we did not meet in December. So I'm just checking if anybody had any issues with the minutes. All right, I'm not hearing anything. I, I no, don't and I didn't receive anything via email of okay. any corrections. So I think they're okay to pass. All right, then if everybody's good with that, maybe we'll just, um, does, I'm not sure, does everybody know everybody? Maybe we should start. I think that's on our agenda, yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's a, um, is introducing oh. our new members. Oh, that, that's the next item. See, yeah. I should have read, <laughs> read the agenda. All right, so we're gonna talk about committee openings and we wanna welcome our new committee members. So um, should we just go around the room and just identify and every, we can all identify ourselves? Yes, can we do a motion to accept the minutes first a and a second? Do we have a quorum? Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. We have seven, but do we need more from no, at that large? Sounds good. We yeah. can do that. Yeah, I think have we're you good. Uh, Amy, did you include me? Yes. So oh, okay. does a member want to make a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Okay, that was Eunice and a second. Yes. We need a second from. Second. I'll, I'll second. Thank you. Oh, did you get that, Amy? Yes, thank that you. Was so bad. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, no. so we're going to talk about our old business committee openings. So we're going to first welcome our new members. And what we'll do is we'll just, I'll just call on each person as I see my screen just to introduce yourself. I'll start with me. I'm Kathy Bagley. I'm the director of the Parks and Recreation Department and the Social and Youth Services Department here in Weathersfield. Uh, Tom? Uh, Tom Mazzarella, uh, Town Council Liaison. Chris? Um, I, hi, everyone. My name is Chris Taylor. I'm the Elderly Services Coordinator for the Town Municipal Agent and Veteran Services uh, Representative. Thank you. Eunice? Eunice DeBella. Um, I guess I'm just a member of the committee. <laughs> and New Hart. member of the committee. That's great and welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Sylvania? Hi, I'm Sylvana Flattery and I'm the Resident Services Coordinator over at the Wethersfield Housing Authority. Diane? I'm Diane Shlahetka. I'm just a, an old resident of Weathersfield, Connecticut, and I'm a new member. Excellent. Welcome. Amy? Oh, Amy? Uh, Amy Miller. I am the Weathersfield Senior Center Coordinator. And Phyllis? Oh, you're on mute, Phyllis. Sorry, <laughs> I muted myself so you wouldn't hear any of the background noise that I've got yeah. going on, but I, I apologize. I'm Phyllis Garcia and I'm a new member to the group and uh, thank you for uh, having me on the uh, on the committee. I appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Yep, to all the new welcome. members. Sorry, Amy, go ahead. I would say <clears throat> welcome to all the new members. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, and I would second that. We do have um, a few openings still with the committee, um, but we're getting there. So this is all good news. So we have a vacancy with a health or medical person. So that would be someone we're gonna be looking to recruit. And then a vacancy at large. So we have, so those are two vacancies for the full board. And then there are two alternate positions that we're gonna look to fill. So four total, but two to just complete the full board. So if you know of anybody, we kind of just do a recruiting thing. If we see anybody, we think that they might be interested, we ask them 
and we just invite them to come to the meeting. And if they like it, then they can let us know and we can talk to our council liaison, Tom Mazzarella, about seeing about them possibly being appointed to the board. So that's how can the I process you, works. Can I ask you a question about that? If you, if you know of someone who you might want to contact, does the member do it or do you present the name to the chair of the committee? How does that work? Oh, the member can do it. Okay. We're pretty because informal. I, we're, you know, we're always okay. encouraging people. Okay. I, um, I would hate to give a name to the committee without <laughs> giving them a warning in advance. Oh yeah. You know. <laughs> so I I might have a, a health person I could contact. Wonderful. And that, I do have one more senior center member that may be interested for the at large position. So if we could get those two, that would be fantastic. We could have a full board um, and then work on the um, alternates. Yeah, can well, I just ask, okay. what, what is the criteria for the health and medical? Is this somebody in the medical profession? Yeah, it could be any anything with the medical profession. It could be somebody that's in the health field. It's just trying to bring some experience to the commission in that area. It doesn't have to be a doctor or a nurse. It's been a lot of different people in the past with their experience. Okay. All right, so then anything else on membership? <coughs> then we'll go on to our um, talking about a possible spring event for the commission. And Amy, I don't know if you have an update. Yes, I do. Um, so I spoke or I emailed the Central Connecticut Health District um, and Charles Brown got back to me. They do have um, a person there. Uh, her name is Betty. Can't think of her last name. I actually just sent her another email. Um, so they have a person that does do speaking engagements and she has um, a variety of topics she discussed. And I did kind of fill them in on what we might be looking for. Um, and we were open to ideas, but mainly um, health and safety for seniors in 2022, and perhaps talk about um, COVID if that's still, an, and I'll, I'll be honest, I still get calls every day and people are um, confused at all the information that's out there. Um, and so it might be, if we can decide as a group, once she gives me all the materials, I can email them. Um, I'm expecting like a list of things or, or what she would um, suggest that we have. Um, and then we could put it out to the group and, and make a final decision of what that talk could look like. Um, and the health district, as Kathy knows, she's worked with them for many years. They um, they do all different kind of services. So they also it would almost be like we could have some pamphlets out there for the different services or um, where people can get assistance and things like that. Um, yet it will be small enough. I think that we won't have to worry about. I think we decided to go in this direction because we didn't want it to be um, such a big event like the travel show that we wanted to do originally that got shut down for COVID and that is put on the back burner. So I do foresee that us being able to do this in May, um, having it mostly like a presentation or lecture and people can spread out in the um, banquet room, you know, fingers crossed, maybe by then we might even be able to serve, you know, coffee and snacks or something um, light. But, you know, if not, we'll, we'll be, you know, doing what, what I've been doing all along here uh, with no food and, you know, we can make it work. So um, does anyone have any other um, suggestions that they would like to hear from them or is, is everyone okay with us moving forward with them? Um, Amy, I was just wondering what date you had in mind for the- I did not program. pick, we have not picked a date yet. Um, okay. it, it's in May. I mean, that can be up to the group. Uh, I've in the past, I've just made sure it wasn't a day that we didn't, we had um, anything scheduled here, like a bigger group. You know, my hope is that setback and bingo will be back by then. 
Um, so we would stay away from Monday, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, you might remember, I believe we held it on, I'd say a Tuesday um, the last couple of years, but I can go back and look, you know, um, and we'll just see what's best for the group. And, um, or if there's dates that don't work for, for you, you know, just let me know. So, but it, it's usually mid, mid May is what we've done in the past. Cause it's before okay. like the kids are out of school and it's getting geared up for summer. Um, but the weather's still nice, so that might help us out. Thank you. And Amy, maybe yeah. just back up a little for our new members and just explain how the committee does a, an event. Thank you. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. Um, so each May or springtime, um, I think in the past few years, it's been in May. Um, one of the main things that this committee does is it sponsors um, an event. Um, they've held some health fairs in the past. When I came on board, it was a uh, clutter to the gutter and you, it, you as residents may have attended that. Um, and it was a wonderful speaker. We had the shredding truck and, and it was, um, so they look for topics or in, things that would be of interest to our seniors in town and it's providing a service. Um, so like I said, they've done health fairs. We were talking at, um, last year at COVID of doing, we were going to have a travel show um, fair and different travel agents come and boost up and uh, have somebody do a little talk. Uh, however, with COVID, that was such a big event too, um, that obviously we had to cancel that year, but and we, we were thinking that we were going to have them come back when things settled down with COVID. But as we all know, things haven't completely settled down with all the variants. This may be ongoing for a while. So we chose to go with something that we think will be more manageable and, and um, th but that we can have an event this year because I'm trying to think we didn't, did we ha not have one in two years or is it just one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're all mushing together. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so it's cause it, it's very, it was very difficult cause after that first year, you know, things did open up a little bit, as we know, in the spring and summer, but um, it was too hard to to really put together an event, you know, within a, a week or two, because we have to advertise it and things like that. So um, we usually do start planning in January to make sure everything's all settled by May, um, depending on what the event is, we might break into subcommittees. Um, for instance, during that travel one, we each had uh, different agencies we were contacting and, and getting them on board and things like that. This being a smaller event, we probably won't need as much. Um, and then it's all hands on at the event. Um, Chris and Silvana and a lot of times folks from either uh, Parks and Rec or social services comes help um, if we're passing out food or doing things like that. Um, and then obviously the committee members are there to help us run the event. That was what I was going to ask you. What is the involvement normally for the committee? And it's minimal. I mean, it depends like on what it is. As we're discussing it, usually when the topic comes up, you know, it's a group committee. If you, if you have ideas what you want the event to be, and we discuss and we vote on um, what the event's going to be for that year. So like I said, we usually, I think we start talking about it maybe a, in November and say by January, if you guys can come with up with some ideas that we'll get started on. So yeah, since we just meet once a month, but um, I, Kathy, you may, I mean, I've only done one. I was even here for the planning of the first event, I think. And I think that part of it is that um, if we're looking to do something on a larger scale, we look to do a little subcommittee of the commission of anyone that's interested once we get the theme that you, some of you may have contacts or you may have some ideas or not. And then they, with staff, they put together some ideas, comes back to the commission, everybody agrees to do it. And then Amy kind of spearheads it unless other committee members are making calls to sign people up to come to, the, to uh, speak at the event. And then the day of the event, we just all pitch in and help out, which is not a lot that goes on. Does that help? 
Yeah, I, I was more I was more thinking about the day of the event, but that is helpful that, you know, obviously the more hands, the better. So Amy, are you focusing on the health district or have you gone out? I'm thinking in terms of going out like to Hartford Healthcare, they have people that uh, do presentations and that kind of thing. I mean, have you thought about going out beyond the health district? Uh, not for this, only because we wanted to keep it small. Like if we were gonna do a bigger health fair, then yes, we would you know, um, reach out to others. I have them do speaking events at the senior center on a smaller scale. And actually right now, they're not doing anything in person. Everything is on Zoom. So I don't know if I could even get them to commit to coming in May. And that would be a little uh, a roll of the dice, let's say, if they said they would do it. And then, um, you know, things were still because they're a health care that they're very they're they're being very cautious about doing anything in person yet because um, they okay, usually come was, to it, things for us. I was thinking in terms of I've I'm there are health classes. I'm not I'm sorry, fitness classes that are done at Hartford Hospital mm -hmm. in their PT department. They also have a dietitian who does classes um, for the public. So I mean, if that's something that we thought that we might want to include on a limited basis, of course, you know, not an all day event, but on a limited basis. Um, I can talk to some people and see if they're willing to do a presentation like a fitness, like the importance of, of moving. And you we know, do. And yeah, I do have a contact that I use for and we do have things at the senior center, but I'm not I guess I'm confused. Do you want it in the same day as that event and have two speakers? No, I'm just throw, I'm throwing that out as a suggestion if you were looking for additional people to come in. Um, you know, that's a possibility. My connection I, there, we might be able to do that. Right. Not on a separate day, but as part of that May event. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll put it out to the group. My thought was we were trying to keep this small and not a, a bigger event because of COVID. Um, cause, and then we, we, we'd have to, you don't want to just have one um, Hartford Healthcare and not invite, say, Trinity Healthcare or something. Um, that's yeah, why we're just cool. doing the health district as a smaller event. Um, like I said, I do have a contact, Bonnie. Uh, her name's Bonnie. I want to say Therian, but it's uh, that's, <laughs> that's not it. Um, uh, she, and she does do the educational. And I do have a contact that if we did, again, perhaps we could talk about it for the next um, year or something if we wanted to do a larger um, health fair and have more than one speaker. But it, Or we could, I can reach out. Again, I think being Hartford Healthcare, they're not doing any in-person things. So it's all Zoom. So I think we would be rolling the dice by including them where we, right now we have the health district and you know they're unbiased because it's the health district. They, they're not affiliated with a, um, a certain hospital or things like that. But that's it's up to the group if you wanna put it to a vote or, or if you guys are good with just um, having the health care. Can I make a comment? Yes. Um, I think I agree with you. If you were going to invite Hartford Healthcare, you'd have to invite other companies to participate, not just one. Right. So that that could be a touchy situation where the health the health district is a is a public entity. It's not a corporation. So you could, that would probably work out better than having them only Hartford Healthcare with um, the health district. But my, I have another question though um, about the meeting. Is it possible that we won't be able to have an in-person meeting in May? I mean, are we, are you planning for contingency like with this then go to Zoom or something? Um, well, yeah, everything I've been, is, I'm just going to speak from my uh, viewpoint at the senior center. Um, you know, the town has made uh, that there's no in-person meetings right now. We are in the red. It is expected that the numbers are supposed to be going down. Um, the senior center, I plan events. And yes, I always have like a backup plan, I guess. Um, okay. So if, 
if the numbers explode, we can turn it into a Zoom presentation, I'm sure, um, and, and do it that way. Uh, you know, when this first happened, we there was there was no backup because it was such a, a larger event, and you know, senior centers or town Zoom was like still a brand new thing to us. You know, we we couldn't uh, turn it into a Zoom event at that point. Now we've been doing it for two years. It would be um, pretty simple to to change it to a remote program. Um, you don't get as much. I mean, Phyllis kind of test to this, you probably wouldn't, you wouldn't get it nearly as much involvement from um, the seniors as doing an in, in no. person. But um, what I've been doing too through all this is we, we've we been um, doing hybrid programs. So we could do it in person, but I could also um, have it streaming live on Zoom so that people, if they're not comfortable coming in, they can watch it on Zoom. We could discuss you know, doing it as a hybrid program so that, and then if the numbers, you know, some variant pops up and the numbers are crazy and we're unable to do it in person, which during the month of May last year and the year before, it's, um, you know, being in the warmer weather, the numbers started to get come become much better by May. And we could discuss, maybe you wanna do it in June instead, but I think we've always tried to do it before the summertime because um, we also start camps here at this uh, community center. So that would be a bigger issue of holding off on that. No, I think the May, from my point of view, the May date seems fine. I just wondered what the backup plan was. So Yeah, the backup would probably yeah. be going doing a Zoom program and, and notifying everyone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I do have a large um, list of seniors that do attend programs remotely, and we would just um, give that out to them. And we could do, you know, I've done like grab and go snacks and things. So if we did do a Zoom program, we would offer maybe them to pick up their bags of um, freebies or uh, free lunch or, right. or snacks um, as a drive through, which I've been doing for two years now as well. So, so what do you think the program would be from the, the health district or would they present you with an option? Well, I think we, um, before Janice left, she had um, suggested, she wanted to perhaps, um, and the, the group had said they were good with that. Like I said, it was probably more senior uh, staying health healthy and safe in the new, in oh, okay. 2022, for keeping some of it, you know, with COVID, perhaps we might, you know, I haven't gotten the information from her yet. She hasn't gotten back to me with a list of, of things, presentation. she has a list of presentations she does, and we could even talk about coming up with a hybrid or something. Okay. So I will, as soon as I get that list, I, I will email it to the group and we can vote on it if she has a number of different things, um, you know, or we could like pick the top three. I know Phyllis had uh, done that with her group recently um, when voting on something if we can't we'll narrow it down to the top three and, and pick does that make sense and yeah it sounds very good actually okay so then we'll we'll just wait to hear more info from what the topic might be right any and, and, ju and just for my information, when do they start the uh, the summer school in the building? June, mid June. Okay, so it's mid June. So if we could, if we had to go to June, we could do it first week of June, right? Well, except, well, it will depend. the 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 center sometimes closed down for senior. What is it? Um, safe grad. Is that oh, what it safe is? Grad. So I know did last year they had it at the high school, so it didn't affect us, but I don't know if the committee has determined whether it's gonna be at the high school or at the community center this year. What they do is they end up kind of closing us down for a week uh, so they can decorate and get ready for that. So um, like that happened, I think on the 17th, the year before, and so we were closed from the 10th. So it'll depend on that and when graduation is, but there may be an opportunity to have it in the first week of June. Thanks, Amy. And we could shoot for, I would say, shoot for the end last week in May if that works with everybody. So that, I mean, we're at the best um, 
weather that we have, well, you know, but, in May. But that get, that sort of might go into Memorial Day weekend. Oh, yes. See? And, Good thing we have you here. Like you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So we'll, we, we do try to pick a good date that where people are available. Um, usually, like I said, I think we usually kind of gear for like a Tuesday, which often doesn't interfere with weekend plans. But so let's see. And maybe, Amy, you can just look at the community center book. I will. Yeah. Just see what might be available. OK. And, I'll, and I could tentatively hold a couple dates. Yeah. And then I'll bring it to the committee and, and we'll also have to see that it works with um, our speaker too. That's true too. Okay. Okay, anything further on, on that? And I'll move on to C, the Senior Citizens Informational Brochure. I know we've been busy editing it. Yes. <laughs> and I haven't finished it. And so I do owe that to you guys too, as well. I know um, there was in the minutes, there were um, changes to make. The minutes. Um, and if anyone had, so when I get it out to you, if there's anything new that you think of um, to Phyllis <laughs> and Diane, I will email you. Um, do I have a copy right here? Oh, it's in the next room. Anyways, I it's a um, senior citizens advisory committee put out a brochure that lists um, services that are available. Um, the commu computer learning center was in there and um, the, uh, you know, Chris Taylor's information for elderly services, the senior center, things like that. Um, there were some things in there that are now um, no longer in existence, like the um, equipment um, I forgot what you called it, loaning of, uh, of medical equipment that used to be uh, here is no longer in existence. So we were just updating that and making sure that um, because we are uh, we're pretty much almost out of those pamphlets so that we can print some more um, and just making any last minute changes. So I'll email you that um, and if you oh, see Amy, anything. <clears throat> Amy, why don't we just do a, a draft edit, a draft brochure Yes. With, the, with the changes that we've we've done for the and next meeting. Everybody. Okay, that sounds good. And that way we get it out to everybody. And that way with the new members, they may see it differently and have some other ideas for us. Perfect. Good idea. Okay. Can I interrupt for a second? I have to leave this meeting. We had a potential gas leak today at oh, Clifffield Road. And uh, the, I see the gas company is out here. I'm just going to have to go. If that's okay with you, sorry. No oh, worries. Okay. We understand. All right. Thanks, Diane. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye. Bye now. Okay, then we'll move on to our our new business, which is upcoming meetings slash remote options. And I think Amy, that's on the agenda. Just to say that right now, we're we're on Zoom again. Zoom meetings till the numbers get better with COVID. And then we hope to go back to in-person. Yes, um, but also I've had a couple members ask me if, if we do come to in-person, can there be a remote option? Um, I think Silvana right now, it, they hadn't come back to the office and it was harder for her to come in. I know Phyllis has some travel plans that, but she is willing to come to the meetings via Zoom or by phone. Um, so we were hoping that we could do a, a, a hybrid. Um, and I know we had talked about that at one point and I wasn't sure if that was an option or it was not an option for like the town council, but maybe for one of our meetings, it could be. Uh, we'll have to check. Okay. We'll work, right, I we can check into that. I think it might be an, a good recruiting tool as well for some seniors who um, transportation could be an issue or mobility could be an issue. Um, and I think that if people knew that they had the option of being able to call in and participate, it might open up the possibility of, of attracting some more people. Because I think you said, Kathy, that we've got four openings, including the two alternates 
So, you know, I think it might, it might be attractive to some people to be able to call in and not have to get dressed up, et cetera. And we have a lot of snowbirds too. So sometimes- I, And I'm one of those. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll be leaving Connecticut uh, in the next couple of weeks and I won't be back, but I certainly can participate via Zoom. Okay. And I've, I've found that with a lot of things, people are participating in exercise meetings, things like that from Florida or wherever they are. Um, it's kind of nice so that we, they can stay connected to Wethersfield when they're out of town. Yeah. And I think it's good too for people whose schedules are a little bit, they, they require some flexibility, like especially people who may still be working part-time or full-time. Um, they're not maybe not be able to attend a meeting in person, but they certainly can can do it by phone. I really would like for us to seriously consider having the the hybrid option if, in the event we ever go back to personal meeting, but at least to have that available to people. And I'll be happy to look. Go ahead, Tom. If I could just add something. So at with the council meetings. The hybrid situation is the most difficult because of the technical aspect of it. Um, every, you want you want to be able to have everybody in the meeting, whether they're virtual or in person, to be able to hear everybody and speak back and forth. And um, we had a situation at a recent council meeting where one member couldn't attend for a health reason, and you know the rest of us were trying to look at one screen and follow that person on the zoom meeting and that kind of thing and, and then you get into recording of it because it's a meeting um i it's it's a great idea but the technical uh limitations might be uh, an issue right you, you know it, and i i agree and i've participated in meetings that have been hybrid and when you're sharing your screen in particular if it's somebody who's remote is trying to share their screen. It does make it a little bit difficult, but it you know it can be done, especially for this kind of a group where we're really not sharing screens right. as much. Right. So I'm and certainly um, you know I'm not touting to be the the tech specialist, but I have done it um, and it is doable. And I know for our council meetings, our computer learning center council meetings, we've been doing hybrid. Obviously, we're much less sophisticated than the town council. I mean, right. that's a totally different animal. And you're, you guys are spread out, too. I mean, that's another consideration that you guys aren't like in a, in a circle and around at a round table. But anyway, I'd be available to help with the technical issues. If that were the hang up, I'd do whatever I, I could to, uh, to do a hybrid. I just think and, and I believe this, this is a committee, not a, not a commission. So I think the rules are quite different. And right now I'm in the middle of rewriting the rules and procedures for town council meetings. And we're, we're hung up on this one paragraph that deals with the hybrid situation or people that can't physically attend. And, you know, we have the lawyers involved now and, you know, it has a lot to do with, you know, uh, satisfying the quorum and whether or not the person's allowed to vote and, what happens if some information is presented at the physical meeting and the person remote can't look at the picture or the drawing or are they allowed to vote and all that kind of stuff. So it's just uh, um, much more difficult in, in our situation than, than would be with this committee. So yeah. but I thought I'd bring it up. Thank yeah, you. it is more complex and we are smaller and I don't, we don't, I don't, Think we've ever had calling questions or things like that or and when we have it's been in advance and um and i i could maybe also help if we wanted to put it up um on a screen i've done that so that we can see everybody we there, there may be ways on uh, the center and the computer learning center we have tablets and um laptops so that we could see everybody if need be but we can discuss that further, but just that might be an option if Kathy, if we talk to IT or something that we do have some of it available to help along the way can or I, just call in. I just want to ask you a question about the 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 minutes. So yes. you said this meeting was recorded. Did you mean like take minutes or did you mean record the Zoom meeting as a recording? 
we you know record. What I mean? Yeah, we record the Zoom meeting, so there's a record of it. However, I do follow up. We we do have minutes of every meeting, whether we're in person or on Zoom. But we so do record. Saying, there's a, a a physical recording, like a tape, or I don't know how you a digital recording. <laughs> digital or, recording. Or yes. It says a digital recording. So I guess if you have a hybrid meeting, you don't record, you don't make a recording of the people that are in the room. There's no physical recording. It's just the minutes, right? Or is it recorded as well? Yeah, no, everything is how we've never... Let's go ahead. We've never done it, yeah. Yeah, everything is recorded. So, yeah. your, your audio is, is recorded. And if you move the, for example, I mean, the, the basic way is to have one, one piece of equipment in the meeting and you kind of swivel it so that the, so that the camera picks up the person who's speaking. That's, you know, pretty basic. But anything okay. that's, that is verbal that is being picked up and anything that's visual that is picked up is recorded. So if you had, because you have to comply with the FOI statutes on recording, so you'd have to have both the audio or the Zoom, the Zoom meeting, however it is, plus you'd have a physical recording of whatever happened in, this, in the actual meeting, correct? Well, I, once again, I think like Tom was saying, the town council is a, a different. Um, right. Yeah. I that's a voting so committee. You, We're not a voting committee, so it's a little so bit more you, informal. We don't have as many um, rules that have to, we have to. No, I, I understand that. But when I was at the physical meeting, was there some recording device? No, no. I just take okay. The minutes. That's what I meant. So yeah. Basically, if it's a physical meeting it's just someone takes minutes there's no actual recording of it correct i mean i know that the term recording means can mean both but i mean it in a different way and so maybe the, if you, you make a good point maybe kathy or tom know that do we have to record if it's a hybrid yeah. meeting if we're just taking minutes um if it's just I don't a think smaller anyone, committee i don't think the statutes have ever I'm not sure. I haven't looked at them for a long time, but I don't know that they really go into that. The the requirements for recording of minutes is, you know, like a, a statutory thing, I think. But that's the only thing I when you were when Tom was talking about recording of the town council, which of course is a completely different thing. I was just thinking about if you, so you would just could just have minutes and then make whatever the recording of the um, Zoom meeting would be and just keep them together. To, would that be how you would do it? Again, we haven't done this hike. yet. I think Kathy has. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to complicate things. I'm no, just trying I'll defer to, to Kathy. It. I think we'd have to look into it. I, mm -hmm. I think we have to do a little research and just see what laws may be out there. And what we mm -hmm. have to do, I I like the idea of tr figuring out a way if it could be done. It makes sense, sure but we have to be. make sure we meet all the state, um, whatever those statutes are. It's and, freedom of inform it's it's the freedom of information statutes and, on and, on minutes. Yeah, that's but, that generally is what covers it. And because okay, I just had I just had that question. I mean, and as that, Amy, I I said we're. The Senior Citizen Commission is advisory. It's We're not committee, policy yeah. making. That may make a difference when we look into I'm it. Sure it yeah. Oh, I'm sure that it does. So it's different if you have a training session, like your, your uh, spring event, that doesn't have to follow any particular rules for recording. So that, that's not a real, that wouldn't be a real problem or it hasn't been for hybrid programming. It's just when you come into minutes of, you know, official meetings of the town. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
All right, so that's something we'll look into and see see if it's possible. All right, so Kathy, is that something you'll look at and then you'll report back in February? I'm going to talk to the manager to see if it's um, if it's if it's allowable, and if it is, then we'll figure out how to do it. Okay, so you'll let us know in, at the February meeting. Great. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so now we're into updates and reports. Um, and we'll start with our council liaison, Tom. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up, which I think is potentially great news for the senior center. Um, Kathy, you're aware of it. You, there's a lot of uh, funding that's become available. And we're looking at uh, replacing the HVAC uh, equipment at the community center. And also, uh, I believe the parking lot repairs are on there as well. Um, and, you know, it's not a guarantee. There's a lot of, uh, once, once the word got out that we were going to have $7.6 million to uh, spend, uh, the request list got very long, very fast. So uh, it's not a given, but um, for sure, uh, heating and ventilation system is towards the top of the list. Uh, so I thought that was uh, good news. Um, I don't know if there's any other uh, items that, you know, have been discussed about, you know, carpeting replacement and the entrance way and that kind of thing. I don't know if those are coming up to no. be added. <clears throat> Yeah, we didn't get into all that time because originally we were looking at the heating and the air conditioning unit. Right. And it was right. such a big number. Right. So unfortunately, Diane had to leave, but she was. Oh, I'm back. Oh, she's back. Yeah, I'm back. back. Well, I know she brought it up, but you know, how uh, kind of dingy the place looked. Uh, and uh, so I thought at least this is a, a step in the right direction. And hopefully it's going to get approved and, and moved along. But, uh, Tom, can I ask you, is that 7.6 dedicated to the community center building? Oh, no, no. 7.6 million was the total funding to the town. Um, uh, 5.8 million, I believe, <clears throat> is what we're kind of, it's unrestricted and it could be used for a, a number of capital projects and things of that sort. The uh, remaining, um, Roughly two million dollars is um, what we're calling COVID related, and uh, it has to do with air quality improvements and things that address, uh, um, you know, COVID problems that came up. And so the air conditioning is one of the things that we're able to put in that category because it's, uh, you know, affects air quality in the in the community center. But okay. no, it's a, it's a wide variety. It has to do with economic development, um, roads, um, all kinds of improvements. All right, so, so there isn't a piece of that that's dedicated to the community center. No, no. All right, because uh, I, everybody's in line fighting for their piece. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> well, you know, because Diane's description of dingy is really putting it mildly. Oh, he's trying to be nice. <laughs> That's, and I know she was trying to be nice too, but that's really putting it really mildly. Okay. Yeah. Well, this I is wish, good news. I wish it was, uh, you know, 7.6 where we could totally renovate the whole facility. But I mean, it's, it's great for the town because it frees up a lot of, you know, things that have been on the list advance quickly. And, you know, those items that are out five years suddenly can become towards the top of the list in a year or two. So. Okay. All, right. All set, Tom? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, next up is Social Services Senior Center. So, Amy, do you have, want to fill us in? You're muted. Do you want me to go to Chris and come back? No, that's okay. I, I had Chris on my minutes next, so that's why I, oh. I was it ready. I am ready, though. I'm sorry. My phone was ringing. That's why I muted myself. Okay. So actually, this is a good time to bring this up. Um, Tom was talking about doing some 
updates to the community center. Um, the Weathersfield Computer Learning Center, who's been around for quite some time, um, they have some extra funds and extra money in their funds, and they would like to donate. Um, actually, let me go back a step. Catherine, or maybe you can help me with her. Grzowski, um passed away last year, and she her family has raised some money, and that was made in her memory to the Computer Learning Center to provide technical technology to the seniors. So um, they have voted that they would like to take that money that was um, made in memory of Catherine and take some um, if, to make up the difference to pur purchase a large screen TV up and we were going to talk bring it up to see where we can put it. So maybe to make the entryway a little bit more um, inviting. Uh, the town hall has one as you walk in and has like a rolling screen of what's the events going on for the day. So we could put up uh, on there the events at the senior center or, you know, the adult fitness programs or whatever we need up there uh, at the community center. We don't have a desk there to welcome people like some other senior center. I know Diane had mentioned like um, the new Rocky Hill Senior Center. Um, they have a, an actual person sitting there. We don't have that set up here, but at least this would might be a nice way that we can welcome people coming into the building and provide them information. Um, so we will be talking further with Kathy and uh, Natalie, who is head of the community center here and talk about, um, you know, and obviously with IT people to see where it can get plugged into the system and you know what we need as far as internet connection and all that kind of thing but that was um on their top of the list of ideas for where to put that money so we're gonna continue looking into getting that done as, as soon as we can if it's all possible so uh, let's see and then so Oh, also, since we were talking about the Computer Learning Center, they are um, talking about changing their name as well. Um, and can you remind me of it's Weathersfield Tech Help? Yeah. No, it's or, or Weathersfield tech, Senior? Tech Help for Seniors. Tech Help for Seniors, right. which and I then, wait. And then maybe a byline. I don't know how we would how we would do that, but maybe a byline that says sponsored by the Weathersfield Senior Center. But the new name is Tech Help for Seniors. And we thought that was more, or they just say that was more um, really what today they're doing. Because, um, you know, 10 years ago, people wanted to know how to use Word or Excel or and get on their PCs that were there. Now, everybody that most of the help that they provide is tablets, iPads, iPhones, um, the technology that's newer. Uh, so that kind of encompasses everything. So I think that's a nice direction that's going in and that perfect timing since we're looking at changing up the brochure so we could put that in there uh, for the brochure when it's finalized. Um, let's see, uh, as far as the senior center is going, as everybody knows COVID numbers are up. I My numbers for registration are down um, for uh, some of our classes like our exercise. Um, we are doing smaller classes anyway to keep people safe with COVID. Uh, I was on a meeting today with uh, other Connecticut senior centers, and I think we're all in the same boat. I think one, it's winter time, uh, so people aren't coming out as much, or they're just choosing one class to go to instead of, you know, five days a week. Um, and the other is some of our folks are still a little wary of a leery of coming out with the numbers being high. Um, and committing to a whole winter program. Um, my numbers are staying about the same for my smaller programs, such as the movies um, and my entertainment, where we are spread out is, is doing very well. But those like one shot deals are doing well. Um, but like I said, all the senior centers, they're all approaching this differently. Some have masks, some don't have mask mandates. Um, but from what I've heard, everyone's, it's, you know, it's been a struggle getting the numbers back up to where they were. So we'll continue to work on that. Um, like I said, special events are good. Um, we did have, um, the town had the mask and um, 
test free test give give out distributions twice this month. I have had seniors come in looking for and that couldn't get there. I did get some provided to us by the town that I'm handing out to our seniors at, at, for events at the senior center. Um, and those are almost gone too. So um, we, we were able to reach out a lot of the seniors and I know um, social services had, get, had gotten some for people that were needy that were homebound um, and they got their test kits that way. Um, and that's about it. I think that covers everything for the center right now. Do we know if more uh, testing kits will be made available soon? I did email, um, so the federal government, um, you can order your testing kits through um, the U US Post Office. Um, so that has been, our seniors were notified of that. Um, a lot of them have already done it. I, I have gotten a couple calls. If they don't have internet, I've helped them out and because it's done by the household. This one, unlike other things like the vaccines where you, you needed an email address, this someone else can order them for you. It's done per household. But as far as uh, the town getting any, um, Kathy or Tom ain't no more than I no, do, but from what I hear, well, that's it. Yeah. We don't we're, believe we so, be. but you never know. Yeah. But yeah there's the ones no. From the, the ones from the government aren't gonna be sent out until the end of, of the month, beginning of February. So I didn't know if we were gonna make something available. The other thing, Amy, and I, you know, now you're talking about this, about people not having internet access. Do you feel that there is a need for perhaps some outreach from volunteers of Tech Help for Seniors to contact people. I say this only because if you remember uh, to get your flu shot through the health district, you had to enroll on the internet. You had to do that online. And they reached out to you, Amy, see if you could get volunteers from our organization to help. And I took some of those calls. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's something you think that we could be helpful in, in helping people sign up to get a test kit. I mean, think about it and, and let's talk I about haven't it. had like a lot of phone calls asking for help, but yeah, if I do, I can, I would, if the, your, the volunteers at the Computer Learning Center are willing to do that, I can send them your way. Um, but I haven't had a lot of calls yet but that doesn't mean I won't get any. I mean, feel free to put it out on and in, in an email okay. using I our will. email address, you know, the computer learning center email okay. address and people can, can reach out on the email, leave their name and phone number and we'll call them and help okay. them sign up. The process in, in total, I think takes no more than 90 seconds. Yeah. It's much it. quicker. It's not like the vaccines. This right. would be a very quick thing to do. That yeah. sounds great. Thank you. Amy, can I ask something? Um, yeah. Can I go next? Because I really have to go on the dot at four o'clock today. Yep. Is that a possibility? Sure. sure. Hey, Kathy. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. So I wanted to uh, uh, thank social services, first of all, for the free masks. Uh, we'll be uh, distributing ours to our senior population next week. Hopefully the weather will be good. And if not, then we have an alternate date. It's been kind of slow in January, but um, Energy Assistance Program is ramping up and working with um, Chris. We'll probably have more business Thank next you. month so and, and, the week, and the month after that. Usually in January, it kind of picks up. And in January, we also have the housing uh, recertification. So that will be ramping up as well. So it's been kind of quiet, but it looks like it's soon to be rolling out. Great. Hey, thank any you. Any questions? Do you have any questions? Or I just wanted to thank you, Silvana, for your help oh. at the Housing Authority uh, with clients. You know, you're, thank you you're on welcome. the energy program. Any, yep, anytime. Thank you. And one more question, Silvana. You said next week you uh, have a distribution to the housing of the yes. test. Okay, thank you. Yep. No, not of the kits, of the masks. Oh, okay, thank. Yeah, thank we you. didn't get that many kits. We're, right. We're not going to hand them, who we're going to hand them out to. Right. So it's, you know, if they come, if they call me and if they say they've been exposed or they feel sick, then that's fine. But uh, I think we only got like 30 of them. 
great, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I know there was a limited number. Yeah, have... no, I know. And I know the town got very little as well for the, its citizens in comparison to the entire population. So I, I realize that. Great. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry I have to go. So have a good night, everyone. No, thank Take you. Care. And thank welcome, you. Thank you. And welcome you. to the new members. Thank you, Salam. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye now. And just a quick follow-up on the test kits, just to give Tom a, a thank you. He was out both days helping to give them out to the uh, to the residents for the public when we had the two distribution days. And one of those days was really cold. <laughs> Very, yeah. Kathy and I were the A team. We were, <laughs> and we're we're hoping if we do get more test kits, it's in June. Oh yeah. Oh. Let's right. hope we won't need oh. them. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> uh. Um, Chris, we'll go on to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a very good meeting here. And uh, I just want to say, you know, like I always say, because it is busy here at Social Services, um, uh, we, Christina and I have a schedule here with CRT clients. We're extremely, extremely busy, which is a good thing. People need that help with their fuel. And I know the high cost of, you know, everything's just going up. You know, the gas, natural gas is going to go up again, they're saying. And so, um, you know, we, we're booking people here at social services until pretty much until the 1st of May. So, um, you know, residents can call in and make those appointments and it's all over the phone. And this year, you know, we have um, more people, as I mentioned last time, you know, more people are signing up because um, people with heat included are also able to apply if they're within the income guidelines. And CRT is not looking at assets this year. They're only strictly looking at gross income. So, you know, that makes more people eligible. And uh, we're assisting people with all kinds of things, emergency fuel, operation fuel, special needs fund. Um, the I wanted to again remind people to apply for the tax relief program for homeowners that starts February 1st and it ends May 15th. Um, this year, people have to apply, so they'll be getting letters from the town assessor's office, the ones that have, you know, applied in previous years, and new people can apply directly to the town assessors and complete the applications. Um, I wanted to say, too, there was mention, we were talking about um, the COVID test kits, and I hear that the government is going to have a phone number also for people to be able to call in. Um, I don't know when that's going to be in, but I've been reading about it. And, and uh, so that is a possibility that, you know, people without computers will be able to call in for those free test kits. And, I thought uh, I heard the same thing, Chris, but I couldn't find it on any of the emails. So if anyone has a, those. Yeah, AARP, I think, yeah. has something on there. Mm -hmm. So if you if anyone gets that number before I do, I will send it out. Or if Yeah, I don't have a phone number, but I did read that the government's working on that. Great. And I wanted to mention, yeah, so we've taken about um, end of December, we you know, 237 applications have been taken for CRT and when we're talking to people, we also mention other programs like SNAP and our food bank and uh, dial a ride and things that people need, you know, that the, that it, um, that is on their mind. And so we do promote other programs as well. Um, this month, I took myself another additional 49 applications to date. So, you know, people are applying for that. And uh, and let's see what else here. We helped the emergency management stuff bags with the COVID kits, um, testing kits. And uh, so that was a lot of fun for me. And um, and we keep uh, meeting the needs of the seniors that come in to use our food bank. So uh, this month so far, we've had 17 seniors and each one gets three bags of food. So that's about 51 bags of food so far this month. So you know, if people uh, need any help, they can give us a call here. We are here for them. There's all kinds of help for them. And uh, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> um, Chris, you said 237 applications for CRT were taken. Is That's the energy assistance? Energy until the end of December. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I had a question. 
Chris, um, on the minutes for the November meeting, it mentioned that the CRT worker who assisted with the energy assistance program retired. So I didn't That's know. Correct. I didn't know what impact that had on you and your staff and whether that person was gonna be replaced. Well, that's a good question. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I know Erica and I have talked and Kathy and uh, we reached out to CRT, but at this point they're, over, you know, they're short staffed. So it doesn't look like for this winter season uh, that the town will have another CRT worker. That's some, somebody that I had gotten in the past, you know, um, we, we had made sure that Weathersfield had a CRT worker that came in once a week and uh, Conrad retired. So I'm not sure. I hope that someday in the future, maybe next winter, we'll be able to have, you know, an extra additional person coming in to free us up for other, you know, emergencies that happen with seniors. So basically that person, whatever work they were doing now has been rolled over to you and your staff. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, it's just me and Christina that take the applications here for the town. Now, was that person paid by CRT, Kathy? Does that come out of their budget or? That was paid by CRT. Yeah. Chris was fortunate enough years ago to get them to give us uh, extra help. Yeah. And we kept it this long. We did pretty good, right, Chris? I think so. I think so, Kathy. You're right. We're very lucky. We haven't given yeah. up yet, but it nope. has definitely put a burden on both social workers because they had to not only pick up, he would do one day a week. So that was quite a few applications. But because they also relaxed some of the eligibility, now more people are eligible to apply. So mm -hmm. it's a double whammy. Yeah. So it's, and it's just what happens that things like that happen and somehow you have to figure out a way to get the job done. And both Chris and Christina have set aside time each week to go through and do those applications. And they're all done by phone, nobody comes in. So it's all phone interviews. And like you said, uh, these times with the inflation and everything, I'm sure more and more people are needing the assistance too. Yes, there. Yeah, I forget how far out we're booked till Chris is. I don't know. I, I haven't looked at the appointment yeah, booklet, but yeah, I know last time book. I heard Christina, I think it was March and maybe, you know, she's booking and it to March. Thank you for saying that. That reminded me, I forgot to mention too that um, the tax assistance through AARP is coming back this year and uh, social and youth services are taking appointments now. I did send out an email to our seniors. Um, so if they wanted an appointment, they just need to call social and youth services that um, they're taking appointments starting in February. It's limited appointments. It's not as many as they took in the past so that they can socially distant and um, provide safe uh, assistance with them. I think we've gone through the list. The, um, the last thing was parks and rec and social services. I think both Amy and Chris covered a lot of information. And parks and rec, the good news is we're, we're, we have programs ongoing. We're very careful of numbers. And my favorite thing to say this week, we actually opened Spring Street for ice skating to the public. All right. Um, which we haven't had it cold enough to be able to do that for a couple of years. And maybe ice fishing too, right? Uh, well, I don't know if the, I don't know if the cove is that solid yet, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> the public skating. So, um, mm -hmm. so if you have, if you want to drive by, because the kids are always anxious to get out there. I grew I up just, skating down there. I love it, Don. I'm so glad you. you know, but, yeah. You know, it, it, I have to tell you, I'm not that far from the pond, and it really having those people on the pond skating adds a whole new festive atmosphere to that whole part that whole street i am so excited about seeing them back so i don't care too much about the ice fishing but it's great to see the kids on the skating <laughs> but i understand that there was ice fishing in the cove i have i know somebody who lives by the cove she said they were out there she was a little oh. concerned the water didn't the, it didn't really look that solid but she said they were out there hey listen when you're an ice fisherman or fisherwoman whatever however you want to say it you're dedicated, so I give them a lot of credit. I guess it was cold enough. <laughs> well, we had that really cold day, 
And it looks like it's going to be cold at least for a week or two because the maintenance guys, they put a lot of work in to get the ice in decent shape for everybody. So, um, so anyways, that's all I have for that piece. I'm excited. Um, does anybody that. have any announcements? Um, I had a, a question and I don't know if anybody knows the answer to this. Um, in, in this brochure that used to have facts about the town, about 10 years ago, uh, there was a statistic that said in the town of Wethersfield, approximately 26% of the population was over 65. Does anybody know where that number is now? I have that somewhere. Um, they just did a new survey and Tom may have it. I don't know, but I can find out for you. And I don't know the number, that. but it's higher. It's higher than 25. Yeah. Higher. Okay, yeah. so it went up. I'm not okay. surprised. Okay, I I didn't know, you know, more new families are coming in. I didn't know if it was kind of leveling out, but okay, it's good to know. Um, I guess my only, as, as being a new member, and maybe this is something we can talk about in, in future meetings is, and I know Kathy, you touched on it as we when we first started, is recruitment. But because we have such a high population of, of 65 and over, which at the time, 10 years ago, I remember reading that Wethersfield was in the top towns with populations over 65. I really would like to see how we could get more people involved in, in maybe not even being part of the uh, advisory commission, but at least to participate, be involved in the meetings. You know, how can we entice more people? So anyway, I'm just throwing that out, not looking okay. to have a big discussion about it today, but maybe we can think about that. That we need to remember that our over 65 population is really up there. Sure. Yes. And as you know, um, it's the same with recruiting for volunteers at the center for the computer learning center. It's it's been tough. I don't know. It's it's hard to get some volunteers these days. But yeah, we'll continue. I I will continue putting it in the newspaper or the rare reminder in our newsletter. Uh, but if you come up with other ideas, I put it also on the um, senior center uh, page. I'll have to check that I've kept that up still. Yeah, and I know there was something in in one of the minutes that I read something about revamping the ad, the senior center ad in the rare reminder. I, you know, I have to tell you, I'm the, and I'll admit it, I get it in the mail, it goes right in the recycle bin. I don't even look at it. I don't know how many people really take a look at it. And I don't know if we're using that as a tool for advertising. Um, I mean, I'd like to see us try to utilize the newsletter and do something with the newsletter because I think that gets more attention than the rare reminder. But again, I'm just throwing this throwing this out. It's not something, it's just something to kind of think about. I know Amy that you know you and I have kibitzed about this. Every time I'm in the building, I'm complaining about something. So yeah, you know, and, and part of that is budget of um uh, and how it gets um to the public. You know, we do put it in the town library. Um, and deliver it to um, like Executive Square and different places around town. However, um, some towns with larger budgets, I mean, that might be something we can push for uh, if we wanted it mailed. Um, some of them do like three months at a time and then they're mailed out. Um, but again, that's a much bigger cost. Uh, we don't have, right now our newsletter, I think is, we don't, pay anything to have it printed and we get uh, money from the sales uh, advertising in it. So it doesn't cost us anything to print it, but it is a big number, I think, to mail it out. Um, but that's something we, I guess, you know, I, we, I could bring up with Kathy in our budget. Um, but, and as Tom can tell you, our budget is always cut instead of an increase. So I would love to see more money come to the senior center. Uh, so anything we could do to promote that, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, you know, after being in Glastonbury and I'm looking at their newsletter, holy moly. So I wanna, and I'm sure you've seen it, Amy, but I'm, I, I'm saving a copy here for next time I'm in the building to show you, theirs is 13 pages, I'm, but they include not only the senior center, theirs is the whole community center. Right. So, but I do think that maybe there's a way that, that we can make better use of the time. I just wanted you to see it. 
to see a, a recent addition because they do three months. Right. The one I picked up was January West Hartford does months. three months. Um, the person in West Hartford is now in Rocky Hill, who has the brand new senior center. They, they're doing two months at a time. Um, but yeah. I noticed that in the Rocky Hill one, they had a centerfold that was an actual calendar of mm -hmm. the events that happen every day that you yep. could rip right. out and hang up on your wall and right. you see exactly what's coming and exactly what's there. I thought that was really, that was new for them, but I thought that was really good. Yeah, that I've tried to get that. I need more space though. So, um, I own, I'm only given four pages, I think, and the rest has to be for advertising. If we could get more people to advertise, they, they have salespeople that go out and do it. Um, again, it's more money to get more pages. So um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've talked yeah. about that with uh, our printers and if there's any way we could, I mean, I could, but I would lose something in the print somewhere else. So yeah. Well, the paper it's something, is, to, is it's something to look for going forward, um, you know, but the, the, I'm only allowed a certain amount. Paper is tremendously expensive right now. I just spoke to the place where I used to work and they deal with printing a magazine. And it's, a, it's just phenomenal what it costs. So it is, it is. I'm yeah. sure Kathy knows from they when we do the brochure that goes out. Um, you know, but maybe doing something expensive. like that right onto the website. Maybe we should be utilizing the website. More. I do have it on there on the website and, and, and yeah and doing all kinds of things and you know and and even doing enrollments and you know that I'm not so sure that we're utilizing the technology but I'm with Diane because I'm looking at the Glastonbury they have a calendar but they also do a list um to, to kind of highlight it and it uses a little bit less space that way so anyway something to think about all right, these are great ideas. This is why it's always good to get new people on the board because you come in with these great ideas so we can continue to explore them as we go forward. Absolutely. Um, anything else? Is anything I have uh, correction on the over 65 population. Okay. 19.3% as of uh, July uh, 20, it says. Okay, I'm sorry, Tom, as of when? I think it's July of last year. Okay. How much is it? 19. Okay. And you know what? And you could you could kind of see that um, as families were coming in. Um, I don't know what it's done to our popular our, our school age population, but I'm not surprised that there's been a decrease. I don't remember when it what when I saw, it, but I was going to say it's probably 10 years that I saw the 25%. Uh, so, okay. Thank you, so Tom. April 2020 is the date okay. of the census for Weathersfield. Okay. I thought it was higher. But mm. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was in the That's 20s. a big drop. Okay. Well, it depends on how many years it's been, though. Yeah, and I'm going to say it's 10 years. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else? Well, it's been a good meeting. We got a lot of information. It's great to, great to have the new members. So I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. Phyllis. I moved, I moved Amy, so she, I, somebody else in second it. I'll second. I'll second. Oh. That was Eunice, I think. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. We're okay, good. thank you, everybody. Have a good, uh, stay warm. <laughs> and um, we'll talk to you next month, if not sooner. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you. Everybody. Have thank you. a good Bye-bye. And Amy, thank just you. stop the recording. Yep, thank Bye. you. You're all set? Yes.